Hi guys, hope you're all doing good. And in this video, we'll go through a tool inside Davinci Resolve that I think is one of the most overlooked tool. And this is a tool that is basically used to improve our workflow much more faster and make it more easier. You guys would have seen the title and you know this video is all about the ripple node changes to clips and the current group. So if you go to the color section over here and you can see that these are the two options that we're talking about. So what we'll do in this video is, I'll just use this video to also put up a preview of my new power grid and then make sure to use these two different options over here to make our workflow much more easier. So yeah, we'll just dive right into it. So what I'm going to do in this video is apply my new power grid which I'd like to call it as a mystic enough power grid for all the different clips and then ripple some changes so that we get a proper look out of these clips. So you can see that I have disabled the few nodes. I'm just going to enable them all except for the grain node over here because the grain node is something that is a very complex structure that I've set up and enabling this might cause some performance issues and some issues with the playback. So I'm going to go to this white balance node over here and uh, increase the temperature quite a bit. This looks good then drop the contrast Increase the offset and then use the shadow. This seems good. And you can also see that in these high contrast edges, the halogen node is creating this very good soft halogen that I'm quite liking it. So yeah, now I'll just uh, apply the power grade or the changes that we made to this power grade to all the different videos and how I did that was click on this to a control A and then middle click with my mouse or what I can do is click on apply grade so that it applies to all the different clips yeah uh you can see yes I feel like the temperature is a bit too high over here yeah this seems fine yeah, I think we might need to blame the contrast over here. Something like this. A little bit. I think we might need to drop the contrast just a bit and then deal with the temperature over here and increase it. So yeah, uh, now I think all these clips are looking good as in they are matching with the others and now we'll see what this whole video topic is all about which is the ripple not changes. So if you go to the color page over here you can see two different options. One says ripple not changes to select clips and the other says ripple not changes to current group. And you can see that I have set up some hotkeys or the shortcut keys for these two options and how I did was go to DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization go to color and you can see yeah two different options and I feel like the control space and shift space for my uh, workflow it fits perfectly well and it's kind of saving my time in whenever I have to ripple. so yeah we'll see what uh, ripple node changes actually does so if I go over here and then what I can do is go to this never mind and just go to the subtractor saturation node and drop the saturation a bit I just exaggerate it so that we can see what the difference is in all the other clips and if I go do a control A and click on shift space you can see that these changes have occurred in the other clips as well and that is how rippling works. Maybe you can do this uh, with something like a group pre-clip or the group post-clip but I would prefer the uh, ripple node changes because if you see this node structure that I'm following over here the CST starts and end, ends right at the clip level. So having a to make changes in all these clips I prefer using the ripple node changes. So the sh shift space that I used over here is to ripple no changes to the selected clips so if you have to do it to a current crew 
what I can do is select all these clips, add it into a new group. And whenever you make a certain change in one single uh, clip, all you can do is just do a certain change. Now I'd have to do a shift space. But without selecting these, you can simply do a control space and it will get uh, reflected in all the different clips in that group when you have set it at the group level. So yeah, that is one method and this is the other. But in both ways, the uh, rippling happens only from one node to the other. So now that we've seen how the ripple node changes work, a few things to note over here is we might need to follow a similar structure as in the node structure in all the clips or in all the clips that we are trying to ripple it. And why I'm mentioning this is because so let's say in this new clip over here, I'm just adding a new node right after this adjustment node. Yeah. So over here, if I'm making some offset change, something like this, and now if I'm looking to transfer it to the other clip, so I'm just going to click shift space and what happens is the changes that we made over here in this eighth node will affect the eighth node and the other clips, right? You can see that the subtracting satur subtractor saturation has disappeared and these uh, no changes have taken place. So one thing we can understand from this is that it we need to follow a proper node structure because the rippling works based on the node numbers. We made the change in the eighth node and that has affected both these clips in the eighth node. So yeah, what I'll do right now is go over here and then just do this. Let's see what happens. Shift space. You can see now everything is back. Yeah, so I'll always prefer to use it with a similar node structure or the same node structure for all the rippling changes. And if you're not trying to use that, then maybe keep in mind that whatever changes that we make to a certain node will affect a certain number in the other node or a certain number node in the other clip. So I think this is what I wanted to uh, like uh, put forward to everyone who is new to color grading because I think this is one of those tools that I feel like you know if I am known this or known about this tool in the first place I think uh, most of my, my works would have been much more faster and simpler because there are times when I've made some changes to one node and I've you know tried to copy it to the other node so what I do is note down these numbers and type down and type them down in the different clips for the same RCP stuff but yeah this has made our work a bit more simpler and also, yeah, I was like able to show you what my new power grid does as well. And I think I'll be doing a new different video just to showcase the power grid and the different elements of this power grid. And I'm quite excited about how things have turned down for this uh, power grid. So yeah, thank you guys. Hope you liked it.